Okay. It's been a while. It's been like a year later while, but anywho, better later than never, huh? So, if you don't know, this is supposed to be a weekly series with gnome development updates. But, in this episode is going to be more like a random picks from Gnome 48 Alpha. Yep, yep, yep! <laughs> we are ready in 48 Alpha! Stable release is coming mid-March, but since last week, the 48 Alpha is already here. Mm -hmm. Most of it, anyway. It's kind of complicated. Alright, Chief, let's do this. So typically, we are starting from Mutter, because if you want to see all the good changes in Gnome, you only need to check Mutter. Actually, it's either Mutter or GTK. That's my opinion. And more specifically, here we'll start with a merge request that improves the situation of global shortcuts. Basically, there isn't global shortcut support in GNOME right now, so there are several commits that try to introduce it. If you're unsure, global shortcuts is a way to call applications or application actions that don't have focus. For example, a global shortcut could open a new tab on Ghosty and summon some CLI application on it while you're working in Godot on screen A and Ghosty sits on screen B. I can't promise that will be ready for 48 release, but it's quite likely, but then again some UI patches like the one in settings sometimes take a long time to be reviewed. Next we have a patch that improves the color state and the support of Gamma TF. I have to be honest with you, I don't have any idea what that is. I'm even lazy to look at it, but that's on top of 3948. Support arbitrary primaries. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, again, no idea what's going on here. But that's on top of handling minimum, maximum, and reference luminance values for the display, which is important for proper brightness and contrast levels in HDR. So, we got to something eventually. Speaking of HDR, the support is still a draft, and for very good reasons, I'd say. So, if we go to the very end of this thread, this guy is like, so I went and merged the new HDR, enable PRs, and, and got a toggle with the new color protocol PR in Wayland protocol, so everything needed was working for gaming and MPV. And in certain content, this would happen. Gandalf the Red? You shall not pass HDR. Not on this cycle. Bummer. <laughs> Something new and merged is a pre-configure mechanism for newly mapped windows. With that, we can tell a window in what size, position, or in what monitor should start. I think that could be useful, but ironically, the reason for introducing this is the exact opposite of the useful. So the idea for this was to be used in kiosks? True story. Purism has sold more phones than GNOME kiosks in existence, which scales down to between 1 and 2. Anyway, it benefits us, even if that wasn't the developer intentions. So no complaints. Ah, that's a nice change. So it seems we have a full implementation of the XDG top-level drag protocol that enhances normal drag and drop with the ability to move a window at the same time. There is a demo on Chromium 132, which relies on it to implement its tab dragging feature, but that feature actually improves D&D &D in many, many apps, some of them that would even crash. So that's definitely a nice change that probably won't get so much of the attention on the 48 release, but it will be there. In the same concept, there is another small fix, this time for the input handling. It may look small, but it affects casual workflows, like pop-ups failing on touch or wrong cursor grubs. And we also have a new debugger to help GNOME developers with more fixes, mostly on GLES space. So GNOME 48 will feature built-in render doc support. This thing, here. Obviously there are many cleanups and refactoring too, like the drop of Kogel node that was using legacy OpenGL. I think that was the most of about mutter, but I might have missed something. Sorry. Anyway, let's move on. So, Gnome Shell 48 has a new state machine that tracks if a user is, or should be, in a screen time break. This implements health break reminder support in Gnome Shell, and it depends on a few bits and bobs from other modules. On G settings, desktop schemas, a new panel on settings, and some new documentation and it basically implements these designs. Yeah, not exactly those, because these are a bit optimistic and not what happens in real life. What happens in reality is that settings has this new panel called well-being that we can add a reminder to take our eyes away from the screen. I don't get it why we should do that. Unless, of course, we have another screen to look at. 
Basically, guys, you know what? I can scroll shell commits all the way down to gnome 47, and I won't find anything worthy to talk about. So if you're wondering why I'm not uploading gnome that much anymore, is because there is nothing actionable on upstream to upload. Okay, I haven't count commits to compare, but on a lucky guess I would say that so far that's one of the poorest development alpha releases ever. And it's not just shell, the same case is pretty much everywhere. Perhaps, the only positive is the work on Android backend. This is still work in progress, but it's quite active. Some necessary bits have merged, or are about to merge, and I don't know if it will be available on Gnome SDK 48, more probably won't be, but if it is, whoa. It's like the one moment you have nothing, and the next moment you have everything. We'll stay in compatibility world with a patch that will make GTK apps to run better in macOS, because they will now be able to run in Falcon. Um, some context maybe? So, starting from GNOME 47, Falcon is now the default GTK's backend for the native compositor, which is the Wayland. As you imagine, all the work forward goes to Vulkan too, which means OpenGL is pretty much legacy. These changes add Vulkan support on macOS builds via Molten VK, which is a framework that translates Vulkan instructions to metal, like shaders, and it is maintained by the Cronus group. This PR is still open, but all cross-compatibility efforts are super important, and before you pick a toolkit to work for your next app, I'd say to seriously consider portability. Next, we have a widget rewrite, and more specifically, a rewrite on box layout container. The motivation was to improve the performance, especially when the GTK box had many childlike labels and calls to them. The developer refers two cases that this commit solves. One is when Fractal gets unresponsive for a few seconds when we entering a new room, and the second is on Paper Plane App. Basically the exact same issue with calls on message labels. Oh, and did you know, both apps are written on GTK RAS, haha. <laughs> Basically this is a pretty nice commit, because it will improve performance, more or less, pretty much in every app. Because every app uses box layout, and every box layout has some GTK labels inside. Hey guys, you know what, screw this, I ain't do GTK updates no more. And let me tell you why. You see this human here? You see what he's doing? He pushes like 30 commits every day, and everything is GTK related. Actually, I'm sure he's using AI to commit so often. He will deny it, but never trust a human. Point is, I can't follow up, so I'll wait to be a release, and Newsfile will hopefully highlight all the major changes, and then I can cover GTK. Except, of course, if I get lazy and start watching animes again and cover nothing. Yeah, that's the most probable scenario. Either ways? <laughs> GTK is super active, and I think glib has a good development too. For instance, this month there was a minor 2.831 release. As you can see, it has quite a lot of bug fixing. So the positive is that both GTK and glib have an active development, but in the negative side, both projects have a very limited pool of contributors. Um, I believe that's a good topic to discuss, but some other time maybe. Libad Weda never disappoints, except this time she denied to add tabs on header bar. Anywho, I polite pass to discuss this further because three days ago we had the 1.7 alpha release that will be included in GNOME SDK 48, and I think, but I don't swear, that it requires GTK 4.17. Whatever. So, for starters, we have some fixes and small additions on current widgets, like a new reveal bottom bar property for bottom sheets a sidebar position for navigation split view. This is kind of cool actually, but anyway, let's bother with what's actually new, okay? Three new things, boss. The adaptive preview and inspector that I have already showed you in a previous video. Then we have the Edwida wrap box, which is similar to box layout, but it wraps items in lines when items don't fit. And there's also a new inland view switcher that is very similar to view switcher, but is more focused to support switching on a header bars buttons group. I think? All right, let's see. So that's the inspector preview that emulates how an app works on a phone. Oh, and BTW, since last time we also have a handy print screen button. That's the wrap box, and there's a showcase with tags that switch lines depending on the space. And remember this because you might see this tags design in a very, very popular GNOME app that I won't reveal. Basically, there is an open pull request, anyone knows it? Anyway, so that's how our tags scale.
and that's the new toggle groups. Well, I said these were meant for the header bars mostly, but I think I got it wrong. Perhaps header bars like the one in Softwrap should still use the view switcher that is more generic? Not that much time to investigate, sorry. <laughs> and so, that was everything? I don't know guys, I don't know what the hell I'm missing, but I also checked on settings, on files, and on GNOME software, and I didn't find anything worthy. There is this commit in software that adds support for system DSYS updates, but I don't think there is currently anyone that actually prefers it over the CLI, let alone the fact, is there anyone using system D images? Look, I certainly missed a lot because I didn't have super time to check all the work as be done in three months for like 20 modules, and that's why these videos should be weeklies, but I can definitely see that 48 ain't gonna be an awesome release. Except of course if we get the Android support. Come on, Gnome. Do it. Just do it.